record this. Okay, so you can watch the recording, um, write a reflection or a summary and, and put that into the class and you'll get your points back if you have to miss class. Um, I would like you to make an effort to get to the classes though because it is um, really good for community building. And um, I hate to say that, you know, I'd hate to be the only the two people that are presenting or three people that are presenting and nobody else show up for class. Um, and the other thing is within the syllabus and within a lot of the class assignments, it says that you must teach each lesson to get your points. Um, this is being run in a summer session. It's usually ran in fall and spring. So those of you that are K-12 teachers, you pretty much are out of luck with you know, students to try these things on during the summer months. So because of that, we are going to do it this way. If you can actually run the lesson that you're designing with students, neighborhood kids, your own kids, people you can round up on a you know, youth group or something like that, people in your office, if you can get anyone to sit or work through the lesson or you can incorporate it within your workday or anything like that, then you're going to write that into your reflection or into your um, write up for it. And when you submit it, then you'll get an extra point with it. Okay. Um, that's the only fair way I can see to do it because of the lack of classroom access for a lot of people for this. Um, so that will be a little bit, I've changed the syllabus to fit that um, when I reposted it, but there are probably places in the class that don't actually like say you have this option. I'll try and catch them as we go through, but I'm making the changes so that you um, can you know, do this class if you don't have a classroom available. So those are the two big changes from the syllabus. Other than that, we will be, every week we'll be talking about one chapter or two chapters. You're going to be writing up one or two lesson plans and you'll be submitting those. Um, with the lesson plans, you, uh, the requirements, I'm sorry, my voice is all scratchy tonight. Um, with the lesson plans, there's a template within the class, the information's in there for it. If you have a lesson plan format that you use for your own classroom or training format that you use for work, you're welcome to use that as long as it covers the same basic categories or areas. For those of you that do not have a background in teaching, like within the classroom, so you're really, you know, kind of not sure about writing objectives and things like that, just let me know and we can um, set up a time and talk through it so that you're able then to um, complete these and feel like you're, you're understanding what you're doing um, if you don't have a background in education that really has prepared you for that point. Because I do know that there's some people in training and development and things like that that maybe don't have a classroom background with it. Um, any questions that you happen to have right now about the syllabus, about the class, about anything like that before we go through chapter one and start talking about the, the classroom content, the, the course content? All right, good. If you do, just unmute and hop back in. I'm muted. For those of you that didn't realize that, I muted you um, because we were getting some feedback from someone. I wasn't sure, so I just muted all. So feel free to um, unmute and ask questions as we go. All right, so the, I'm starting this slideshow here, one second. Hold on, it's not cooperating. <laughs> I, have a, I have a quick question while you're waiting. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, I'm on my iPad and I can see you fine, but if, if I'm on the computer, I'm trying to get on the computer too, and okay. I just briefly saw it connect, but now I have nothing. So what, did, I, did I have to um, sign up for something or? No, it should be it should be coming up. Um, it, could be that your, it could be that your computer is not. Whenever you open the website, it says allow video and a microphone, and it may not it may not have allowed you to do that. Like you may not have you may not have you may not have clicked. Um, okay. Hang on, I'm, I'm going to have to move in, into a different room. I'm going outside. Okay. Sorry. Um, 
I'll keep trying, Jen. Go ahead. Yeah. So as you, whenever you log in, if you if you click on the allow microphone and camera access, then it should let you see things on there. Okay. Um, that's usually where it happens. Sometimes you have to start your computer over again. I've had that happen before too. Okay, I'll try that. All right. So we are going to. Um, yes. There it was. It's just under. <laughs> oh, okay. Perfect then. Um, I'm having a few issues with the fact that Zoom doesn't let you share your screen and actually do presenter view for PowerPoint. So that's something that we'll have to work through with you guys in the future as well. Um, if you're going to use PowerPoint or Google Slides for it, then you're going to have to keep it in like the, the con construction or creating mode and you're not going to be able to share it in, in presenter mode. So this is what you're going to get. So I apologize for the not quite um, as nice uh, presentation here. All right, so this class is EDU 706, Theory and Practice and Instruction. And in it, we are looking at nine different strategies that you can use in your classroom. And we are looking at how those tie to theory. There's a PowerPoint for theory as well that goes along with this in the week one um, the class materials. And you can work through that. There's some notes put into it. You can also go back to your ed psych class and look at some of the materials from there. If you have some questions, you can email me anytime and I'll get back to you as soon as I possibly can. Okay, so in the text, this is the text that we are working with and we are looking at um, basically for this health theory and how research guides how you're teaching and how your students are learning. And so we'll be looking at what the students will be learning. Um, how we can, the strategies that we can use to help them learn better, and that are, these are research-based, um, and then how can we help them practice, review, and apply knowledge, and then we'll be looking as, at the end of these at assessment, how you know, if the students have learned. The strategies that are listed there are broken up like this within the textbook. Chapters one, two, and three um, is looking at you know, setting objectives, sorry, setting your objectives, um, how do you provide some feedback and cooperative learning? And then we look at some different ways that you can structure this within your classroom. Um, how do you help them apply these? Moving up through the hierarchy of um, Bloom's taxonomy in a way, looking at how they can apply them and um, evaluate, analyze those kind of things. And then we look at assessment. Okay. So the different, um, the different strategies that have been used in here are research-based. These research-based strategies um, have different ways that or have been tested out within the classrooms to look at how students can improve their learning and um, the gains that have been associated specifically with each one of these. So with this, we are looking at two different types of knowledge. We are looking at um, Information and ideas, these would be like vocabularies, details, organizing ideas, um, how people are gathering these pieces of information, organizing them within schemas within their brain, um, incorporating them within their social cultural, cultural learning, um, using these different theories that you've talked about in ed, ed psych earlier to kind of look at how people are assimilating information and incorporating what they know. We're also looking at skills and tactics and processes. This is procedural knowledge, how people are actually um, able to learn these skills, practice these skills, be reinforced with them. Okay, so within chapter one, we're talking about setting objectives and providing feedback. And there's a nice little Prezi in there that you can watch it some other time if you would like. It goes over it very specifically. Um, whenever you're starting to set up the classroom and you are doing your presentations, the Prezi that is listed on here is a good example or model of what we can expect for you to be able to do with your person that you're working with. Most of you should not have to tackle the chapter alone. There's a lot of people in the class and I'm trying to have two people on each chapter to work collaboratively in order to construct this and present it to the classroom. So you're going to go through your information. You're going to um, pick out the important parts and you're going to construct just a brief presentation. Um, I would say probably 15 minutes at the most and then you're going to be able to answer some questions and talk through it. 
There's a presentation scheduled that's in class one. It's in a Google Doc. You're able to go in and sign up. Um, the, I put in ones and twos in some of them. So there should be at least two people in each of these slots and then you can go through and start adding in a third one. The dates are also listed. There's usually two of them per week for a lot of the weeks and then the final week we are gonna have class. So what we're doing this week then is you are going to design lessons a lesson for this chapter and this is to incorporate both the strategies you can focus on one or the other I am fine with that if you make one of them a priority and then one of them just um, something that is included okay so to set the objective there's um, a technology resource that I think is interesting although it's not perfect it's called the differentiator and I will show that in a minute that can help you a little bit with setting objectives and writing objectives it basically takes some Bloom's taxonomy and it allows it to support um, you structuring a, an objective um, by having you have the, the content, the criteria that you're going to be using, the um, targeted learning, and those kind of things. It helps you structure it out, especially if you're not really familiar with writing objectives. Okay, so because you're not all, most of you have emailed me and said you don't have a classroom of people to work with. Because of this, if you're able to um, just add in a little bit on how you think this would work within the classroom, how you think that um, it's going to impact the learning, or a little bit more of a link to theory, if you're not teaching it, that'll help kind of uh, um, broaden out your lesson plan because you're not going to have the feedback from actually doing it within the classroom. So as we move through the classroom, you're going to read the chapters. You're going to um, create also a non-linguistic representation, okay? The non-linguistic representation is basically some kind of graphic or some kind of visual that you would use to kind of understand what's going on with this. Um, they can have some text and some titles within there or um, a little bit of, you know, air with a name on it or something like that, but it really shouldn't be words. You're looking at a way to kind of visually represent this um, and that's another strategy that can be used in order to help your students really summarize things and capture their understanding. You can take a picture of it, you know, draw it by hand if you're an artist or you know you want to sketch things out or you really don't have the ability on the computer to do it um, as a PowerPoint slide or a Word document or something like that. If you want to draw it out on paper, however you see that happening, and take a picture of it with your phone and upload the JPEG, that's fine. You can also um, do this on digitally and then send me the picture as well as a JPEG or as a, as a PDF. So for example, if you were looking at setting objectives in the classroom, this is one way that we could represent this as an example. Here's your objectives and that helps you personalize the information and that you can also use this as a contract um, for students to um, complete the work and to set up a relationship with them where they're responsible for their understanding. The feedback, we have chapter eight. Okay, and here's some other graphical um, visual representations of providing feedback. Um, it should be targeted specifically what the students are working on. It should be within um, a timely manner so that it's not something you do and then six weeks later you get your feedback on it. You should be willing to tell them if what they need to do to improve in a nice way, very politely and the student should be able to monitor it from that. So this is a nice representation of what providing feedback would look like. So within the class, you're going to have your chapter presentation. There'll be nine lessons for nine chapters, including the one we're talking about tonight. Um, you have a philosophy instruction and assessment before the class and after the class. The philosophy instruction and assessment, you should have at least two good paragraphs, one on instruction and one on assessment. If you kind of think about this as, I know in the, the teaching app, if you've actually completed that, a lot of times they do have um, an essay that you have to write about your philosophy of teaching and learning, or you, know, you pick from one of the seven questions or something like that. Um, when you're thinking about instruction and assessment, think about what you believe happens when students learn. You know, are you opening up their head and pouring this stuff in? Are they a blank slate and you're writing some stuff on it? Are you um, learning along with them and socially constructing it within the classroom and having them create their, you know, construct their meetings as they're working through it? Are you social constructivist, you know, teacher and learner event? 
So think about how you believe people learn and then think about how you have to teach in order for that. Because if you believe that you have the students as a blank slate and you can write on the slate, you know, you tell them they have it there, they learn it, then that makes you teach a little differently than if you believe that students have to actually kind of discuss it and create their own meaning as they're you know, reading information and talking about it with you and with others and, and doing activities so that they understand it. So your philosophy should be a little bit um, probably different for every single one of you, but it, say if you think about the learning and how you believe that happens, that helps you write what you believe um, your instruction would be and then how you would assess that, how you would know that they know it. Does that make sense? A little bit? Okay. Email me if you have more questions. Okay, so we'll do that. You do your philosophy now and then you'll come back to it at the end of the, cl at the, end of the class and you'll revisit that and see if anything has changed as a result of um, the class looking at the theory and looking at these strategies. So there is a final project at the end of the class. And the final project can be one of three different things. You can do a large unit. You can read an article that relates to something you're interested in learning about that deals with theory and instruction in class um, and write up that article. Or you can, a blank. there's one more thing you can do. Um, it's in the syllabus. I just read it today. I apologize. I'm thinking about it right now and I just can't even think about what it is. Okay, so there's a final project that is the last week of the classroom, the last week of the class, and um, the last week is a short week, so do keep that in mind. There's only five days to it. So I would recommend starting to look at your final project beforehand so that you actually have time to work on this. So you can, for your final one, you can do a research summary, basically um, looking at, you know, writing me a little paper on something you're interested in. You can take an article that is a peer-reviewed journal on empirical study where they've actually tested the strategy out, and you can um, review that article you can create a unit plan or you can talk to me about something else that you have in mind. Okay, And then your weekly participation and that counts in on this as well. And the participation will be in the form of attending the, the sessions, um, presenting your material during the week that you've been, that you've selected. And um, if you're not able to attend, watching the video and being able to summarize that then. So when you're looking at a reflective teacher and the reflective practitioner, there should be some content material. Thank you to um, the students that alerted me that that was not showing up. On the left-hand side menu, there's resources, and this is one of the resources. Um, the reflective practitioner has several pieces to it, and as you're looking at your reflections, being able to um, kind of go down through these questions and answer them um, helps you reflect a little bit better on the process. Um, and it ties it back then into the teaching that you're doing. The lesson plan that's listed within the class or given to you within the class looks like this. Um, it is not you know, the perfect lesson plan. If you have a format that you use for your work, for training, if you have a format that you use for your own cl personal classrooms and you want to use that, as long as the information is in here, um, I'm fine with that. It does not have to be a word for word. It says, what do I do and say to the students? I don't expect it to be a word for word script for an entire 40 minute class. Okay, so if you wanna just say, you know, I was a chemistry teacher for 23 years, general science, chemistry, um, and uh, physical science, physics. So, you know, I may not say, what am I going to do and say to the student? I may not say, um, today we're gonna to be talking about, um, Today we're going to be talking about common ions, and you know, we're going to be doing a lab where we have um, Le Chatelier's principle involved, and we're going to be looking at the addition of common ions. We may not say everything like that, but I would be able to say, you know, discuss common ions, talk about the lab preparation, um, lab activity, having the students do that. Um, strategies that you're using then, if I were using, um, you know, setting clear objectives and telling them that I might want to write that out because that's the piece that the chapter is concentrating on, but I don't expect you to have the entire, ch the entire lesson listed word for word for what you're going to say. Okay, so then there are 
Um, these theories are listed, they're in the PowerPoint, it's also in section one. Um, behaviorism, social learning, information processing, and then constructivism, um, or social constructivism. Um, and the prominent authors and people responsible for these theories are listed below. Um, this should look familiar from your ed psych class. Have all of you taken ed psych already? Okay. Um, so if you've had this class, then you should be familiar, whether from your undergrad or you're from your graduate degree. If you have not taken this class already, there'll be some extra reading that would be helpful for you to um, kind of spin up on these. The PowerPoint goes over them in some pretty you know, quick slides. It doesn't take very long to read through it to kind of freshen your memory. But these are the um, learning theories that we'll be dealing with while you are working through the class with the strategies. Um, and what we're looking to do is tie these theories to the, the strategies that you're using depending on how you're viewing learning and depending on how you're viewing teaching and instruction. Okay. So questions that you happen to have for me about any of this? I can't see hands, I can only see six people. So if you have questions, if you wanna unmute your mic and go ahead and just talk, then you'll. Um, yes, um, with that reflective practitioner, yeah. if we're not actually teaching um, a class, when I look at that um, diagram, I just don't even know where to start. So okay. maybe we can talk about that a little bit or I mean if we're not actually teaching it like yeah if you're not actually teaching it so then I would I would approach this as a kind of a pre-planning document almost so what evidence you it says what evidence are you reflecting on on um, what standards does it address so what I would say with that then if you're not actually teaching your lesson um, what do you expect to see what evidence would you be able to collect that would be able to allow you to see if the lesson was working so Kind of think of it almost as a backwards design piece where, you know, since you haven't taught it yet, if you could kind of project forward, if I were teaching this tomorrow, what evidence would I get that would allow me or what I collect that would allow me to think it through and to evaluate the learning and evaluate the teaching then? Um, the, intended, the intended audience, if you're not teaching right now, let's say that you're on, you know, leave for the next year, you're not going to be teaching at all, so you don't have an intended audience when you're writing your lesson. Pick a group. Maybe my goal audience is eighth grade learners in a physical science classroom, um, and this lesson would probably be in the fall. I can just pick that category, especially if you're not gonna be able to teach it now, and describe what the lesson would be targeted to. If you actually have people available, somebody's going year-round school, or you're working in a business world, and you're looking at doing some training, then you have um, definite categories you could actually work with right then that are going to be legitimate people you're, you're rolling this out this week to. Um, but if you're not, then I would say this would be the intended audience. So the analyze piece, this would be also, again, kind of pre-planning. Um, why are you picking the strategies you're using? Why are you picking the activities? How do you think that they're linking back to the um, strategies that are listed in the class? I would just be really, um, really deliberate and kind of picking apart your lesson before you do it and kind of analyzing it with this reflection, reflection rubric or visual. Um, the impact value effect in this and relate to your goals, you're probably not gonna be able to do that. So this would be more like, how does this tie into your, um, you know, your unit plan? How does this tie into your, your standard, reaching the standards for your classroom for the entire year? Um, what do you think it's gonna give the students? So what value added do you see with using these strategies before you even test them out? And then the last one, what have you learned? What would you do differently and why? And how would this change be better? That one you're going to just have to project, you know, I think this is going to be better because since you didn't do it yet. And I mean, I'll be honest with the, for most of these things, if I can see your intention and I can see where you're going with it and how you're using it and how it ties to what we are doing, um, I've had a lot of you in class and so you already know this, but if, if you, if you can kind of make me believe that you are, that this, what you're doing works with what we're trying to do, I'm pretty good with that. Um, and if I would give you something like, let's say you turn one in and I'm like, I don't have any idea how this ties to the chapter. This is no connection that I can see between the chapter that we're talking about, the strategy we're using and what you did. And I give you, let's say, an 80 on it. 
Um, I will always, you know, up until the last week of class, you can always redo something and turn it back into me and I'll regrade it. Um, I'm one of those people that firmly believes in mastery learning. I would much rather if you had something that you know, did not align with you know, what you intended and you redid it, I would much rather have that opportunity for you there and look at it again for you um, rather than just grade it and, and be gone and you don't have another opportunity for it. So you can always resubmit something to me. The second thing is too, if I say, I have no clue how this ties in and you're like, but it does, it's clear to me, explain it to me. You know, I was really using this, this is the take I had on it, this is why, or maybe we need to have a little talk and we can talk about it and you can explain it to me. So either one of those things will work with it. If you don't, you know, if it comes up that you don't feel like it aligns with the grade that you want or you want to explain it to me or anything like that. Okay. Okay. Anybody else have questions? Um, I have a question. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I can't see who has it without... Okay, Kelly. I also have a question. Sorry. Okay. <clears throat> All right, go ahead and talk, and then Kelly, you can ask hers next. Okay. Um, my question was just I, I know it's not always a great idea to give a certain number of pages, but just to give me a, a sense of the length of what you're looking for. Um, I know I've had different principles in the past when they're looking for a different length and I, I'm just kind of trying to get a sense of what what that might look like the lesson plan yeah if you're teaching pre like you're teaching four four-year-olds how to you know recognize the letter a versus you're a community college professor and you're teaching somebody how to you know write a five paragraph essay I don't know the length, I think the length of the lesson plan would vary because of that. Okay. Um, I would say I really don't want to read anything that's longer than three pages, maybe okay. four pages with attachments, five okay. pages with attachments. You can give me the papers that you're going to be using if you think that helps make um, it more clear what you're doing. Um, but I, it really shouldn't be any longer, I don't think, than three pages long unless it's like a unit plan kind of thing that's going to last more than one, or one lesson. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. And Kelly, I can't hear you yet. Me unmute. Thanks. Can can you hear me? Yeah, now I can hear you. Okay. Um, so this might be silly, but um, the unit that we're supposed to teach to the class is that our lesson that I would teach to my class about the topic, or is this? Am I teaching the class about the chapter? I would. My feeling on this, I've never had anybody ask me that, <laughs> so that's an interesting way to think about it. Um, if you're teaching the lesson to us, I think you're presenting the material in the chapter, and then we shall go forth and do as you say. Okay, okay. so, so you're, you're we have to write a second? So you're going to write a lesson plan that goes along with it in addition to your chapter or presentation. In your presentation, the chapter presentation to the class I would say between the two of you, it should be about, I know in there gives you a specific time, but I would say no more than 15 minutes, okay? And you could have several slides, talk about it, and then give an example even from the lesson that you're preparing for your classroom. Um, also, I am a online teacher, so <clears throat> I do PowerPoints for my class. That's like, I mean, I, I don't have lesson plans. I have unit plans, and then I have PowerPoints. So, I mean, do you want me to take screenshots of my um, I would slides? say <laughs> to do your lesson plan for that, that's a really specific question. I would say um, I would take the, le the, the PowerPoint you're going to be using. Because it's like 40 pages, or I mean 40 slides sometimes. Um, so. I would say... The portion, I would say either write up like a one-page summary of what you'll be doing. Okay. Kind of use the template and write me a one-page summary of, you know, I have slides one through five, we'll be talking about this, slides six and seven are going to be using these strategies. However, you're going to incorporate that within the classroom and do it that way and just write it up as a summary document kind of thing. Okay. And then I can attach my PowerPoint if you want to see it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good. Thanks. Sure. 
I can't mute myself. I got you. Anybody else have any questions? Samsung. Whoever has the Samsung, go ahead and t and you're unmuted. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, sorry. It, um, okay. I didn't know that I had to type my name there. I apologize. Uh, my name's Brittany. Brittany right? Uh, so my question is. Um, are we allowed to use different formats for the presentation? Uh, I saw that you were talking about that Zoom pretty much mm -hmm. likes PowerPoint. No, uh, Zoom doesn't really like PowerPoint presentation. Oh. Okay. It doesn't matter. I don't care what you use. I appreciate, um, I'm a, a tech teacher now. You know, yeah, so I have you actually for a text. Yeah. <laughs> so anything you want to um, surprise us with, that's okay. fine. Um, okay. You may just have to, if it's a weird format that, that Zoom doesn't really care for, you may just right. have to like share your, your desktop and play it on there, right. and that works fine. Okay. So, yeah, right. that's fine. Awesome. Thank you. Not a problem. Anybody else have questions? Uh, what if we don't know how to share our desktop? <laughs> okay. So on, hold on, I'm going to stop sharing mine right now, and I am going to share the screen again. I'm actually gonna take attendance with a screenshot here real quick while I'm thinking about it. All right, so on the bottom of the screen, yeah, you I see, see a little green box that says share screen with an arrow up. Yeah. It's green on mine. Uh -huh, um, it is. And you just click on that and then it brings up a screen that has like the desktop, a whiteboard. You can connect your phone to it. You can use the camera and just talk or you can do like just the PowerPoint that I was showing you, I can bring up there too. Um, okay. So I could bring up my desktop and you can see this is my lovely messy desktop um, with this and it just will share whatever piece of the screen that you decide that you want to share. You can share just the document you're working from, just your browser, your whole desktop. You could link it to your phone and show just from there. It gives you a lot of options. And if there's really a problem, there's also a place on there that says remote control and somebody else can take over your screen and, and work with it from there as well. So there's a lot of options we can use for it. Okay. Yeah, and I'll, I mean, I, the day it comes, if you need help walk, walking through it, we'll walk through it. Not a problem. Um, I had a quick question. Sure. Um, so in terms of teaching the lesson for those of us who are on summer vacation from our students, how many children are you aiming for us to teach the lesson to? If you have two and you want to teach a lesson to it, that's awesome. If you, okay. have no, if you have no students, then you just describe how you would do it with the students and turn that in and you don't get the bonus points. Perfect. Thank you so much. Not a problem. Anybody else have questions? Um, like Kelly. Yeah, Kelly has a question. Yeah, I was looking for you. Okay. <laughs> um, two questions. The non-linguistic part, do we do that for each unit? Mm -hmm. Okay. Each chapter you'll have a visual representation of it. And do we have to write our lesson plan for actual students? Because I teach Algebra 2. Mm -hmm. I could use, I could make something up that's not quite so complex that I could oh, teach the sure. concept. Yeah. I think of that as the, um, the class you may have in the future, if it's not who you're teaching now. So I have two, two children and two nieces and nephews. So my one that I chose was hyp the hypothesis. So I could make a lesson geared towards them, maybe guessing or something. Yeah, that'll work. Okay. I'm fine with that. Okay, thanks. Yeah, not a problem. Anybody else? Okay, Zoom is gonna actually kick us all off of here. So um, whether you wanted to leave or not, it's going to. Um, uh, if, if you want to talk to me about anything else, you can either show up tomorrow night at eight o'clock for our online office hours, or you can go back to the link and come back into the Zoom room and it'll let you back in and we can talk some more um, if you need to, okay?